Hi, I'm Joe Alden, MD, also known as Dr. Bones of doomandbloom.net, where you're going to find close to a thousand post videos and podcasts on medical preparedness for any disaster. The gallbladder is a hollow sac-like organ that's attached to the liver. It stores a thick liquid substance called bile that the liver secretes to help you digest fats. Now, after a meal, the gallbladder contracts and the bile passes through to the small intestine through tubes called ducts. Excess bile cholesterol, unfortunately, can cause solid deposits inside the gallbladder that range in size from minuscule to, say, the size of a golf ball. These are commonly referred to as gallstones. Gallstones are relatively common. Maybe 10 to 15% of the population has them. That means that a large enough group of people in a survival community, and you're going to have somebody that has the condition. Luckily, most people won't have any symptoms, but in 1 or 2%, the stones block the ducts, causing pain as the gallbladder becomes distended from excess accumulation of bile. This inflammation is called cholecystitis and it inflames the liver and pancreas in nearby areas. There are two main types of gallstones. Cholesterol stones are the grand majority. These may or may not be related to the actual cholesterol levels in the bloodstream. And Bilirubin stones are the other type of stone, and sometimes they're called pigment stones. This type may occur in people who have illnesses that destroy red blood cells. The byproducts of this destruction release a substance called bilirubin into the bile, and it forms a stone. In other cases, however, it's really difficult to identify a cause why these things actually exist. The pain associated with cholecystitis is known as biliary colic. It's cramping in nature and usually seen in the upper right quadrant of the abdomen and it might radiate to the back. If it's not relieved, inflammation of the liver, the gallbladder, and the pancreas can become life-threatening in some cases. A serious blockage of the bile duct with corresponding liver and pancreas inflammation can lead to symptoms like fever, nausea and vomiting, and a yellowing of the skin and eyes known as jaundice. Gallstones are commonly diagnosed by ultrasound, but you're not going to have modern technology off the grid. The classical finding on physical exam is called Murphy's sign. To elicit Murphy's sign, you press with one hand just below the midline of the lowest rib on the front right. Then ask your patient to breathe in deeply. If the gallbladder is inflamed, the patient should complain of tenderness upon pressure on the site. In a less politically correct era, risk factors for this condition were described as the four F's. For historical purposes, here they are. F. Fat. The majority of those people with gallstones are overweight. Female. The majority of sufferers are women. 40. Most sufferers are over 40 years old. Fertile. Most women with gallstones have had children. Fat. Female. Fertile. 40. Today, more sensitive souls prefer the acronym GOLD, G-O-L-D. G, genetics, ethnicity, plays a role. Native Americans and Hispanics seem to have more gallbladder issues than Caucasians, and Caucasians more than African Americans. O, obesity, obesity, especially in women, associated with at least twice the frequency of gallbladder disease. L, location of body fat. Those with obesity concentrated in the torso are more likely to be at risk. And D, diabetes. Those with diabetes are more likely to have gallstones. The most common treatment for gallstones, other than pain meds, is to surgically remove the gallbladder. You can live without it and stay healthy. As a matter of fact, over 800,000 gallbladder surgeries called cholecystectomies are performed every year. Operating rooms and surgeons, Likely to be in short supply, however, when the you-know-what hits the fan, so it's useful to know some alternative remedies. These are mostly taken orally and include things like apple cider vinegar, coffee, peppermint, dandelion, artichoke leaves, psyllium, lemon juice, and others. Now, it should be noted that hard scientific data proving the effects of these items is still lacking for some of them. As such, you can expect results are going to vary from person to person. Sadly, it's very difficult to eliminate some of the known risk factors for gallbladder disease. If you're 40, female, and have children, there's not much you can do about it. You may be able to do something about being obese, however. Dietary changes to lower the fat intake may help you lose weight and decrease the risk of gallstones. 
This is Joe Alden, MD, thanking you for listening and wishing you the best of health in good times or bad. If you have additional advice for us, please feel free to post it in the comments section below. This is Joe Alden, that old Dr. Bones, wishing you the best of health in good times or bad. Thanks for watching. <laughs> hey, if you like this video, make an old man, me that is, very happy by subscribing to our YouTube channel, Dr. Bones Nurse Amy, following us on Twitter at Prepper Show, and joining our Facebook group pages at Doom and Bloom or Survival Medicine Dr. Bones Nurse Amy. And don't forget, Nurse Amy's entire line of medical kits are at store.doomandbloom.net. That's store.doomandbloom.net. Fill those holes in your medical storage. Thanks again.